ability of organizing a contradiction is what touches the heart of our Dutch DNA. Today, I want to talk about the importance of confusion in relation to education. But what is Dutch DNA? In order to answer this question, people often refer to the Dutch Golden Age. One could say that around 300 years ago, this little country was the center of the world due to a period of flourishing trade, an important scientific breakthrough, and groundbreaking artwork. But often, people also forget about the dark side of this golden age. History teaches us that this was also a period of slavery, colonial conquest, and war. They often forget this, this dark side of the Dutch Golden Age. So I want to follow these traditions, and I will put my blinders on. So ask me, or ask a Dutch random person, what defines his or her character? And nine out of 10 times, you will hear the Dutch are open, direct, uh, and tolerant. And these three values, uh, I see them as typically Dutch. And I also value a society which is open and tolerant. However, at the same time, I see that these values are under pressure. For example, how open-minded are we? Uh, we surround our gardens with two-meter-high fences, and when we have secluded ourselves within the privacy of our homes, then suddenly we can be very open and direct on Twitter or Facebook. This points to apparent contradiction or a paradox. We use the Internet to expand our horizons, but on the other hand, we have created online echo chambers specifically tailored to our personal interests. So what is the meaning of news if we do not encounter dissent? The Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard would have said that this paradox, this paradox is the beginning of thought. So today I want to talk about uncovering contradictions in your thinking. I want to tell you why you should embrace uncertainty, and I will conclude with some practical tips. But if we want to uncover contradictions in your thinking, where do we start? Let me begin with a short story about a personal quest that keeps me awake for years. It all started in the oldest university town of the Netherlands. I moved to Leiden when I was 17, and not because of the will to study, but because uh, of the dream of becoming a professional water polo player. At the age of seven, I started playing water polo. Uh, the oldest Olympic team sport And little by little, water polo became more and more meaningful to me. I got appreciation, people were looking up to me, and they had faith in my potential. In short, everything went as planned. And in no time, I would have made my debut in the highest water polo league. But this all came to an end because of health problems. I suffered from... Uh, heavy sneezing because of the swimming. <laughs> and I was forced to stop because these severe sneeze attacks kept me awake every single night of the week. And by stepping out of my daily swimming routine, suddenly a whole new world opened up to me. And for the first time, I realized that a sports club is much more than a place where you can practice in order to become better and to win matches. A sports club has also a great social function. A sports club is a place 
where all layers of society meet. Yeah, and in this individualized world, sports club may play the most important role for the foundation of a healthy society. A sports club is a place where you can practice the ability of working together with different people. Well, had this insight come to my mind if someone told me about the social aspect of a sports club when I was still in the pool for six days a week? I don't think so. To come to new insight, it is apparently necessary to be confronted with a different reality. And this may sound easy or as, an, as a logical exercise. Um, however, <laughs> this was not the case. It was a period of complete confusion. I had to look for something different. I had to redefine myself in order to stand firm. My orientation began at the Building Academy. At the end of 2014, uh, a few students gathered their heads in a cafe in Amsterdam, like you do as a student in Amsterdam. And they believed, as I did, that we need a different type of education. A type of education that fits better the world of today and tomorrow. And these students with different values, different uh, backgrounds and different perspectives decided to build this education themselves. Bottom up. And these group of students that is still growing uh, and together with experts from all kinds of fields such as education, business, art and research did we build what is now the Building Academy? So, what is this Bildung Education all about? Well, we believe that education should be about the person as a whole. About the head, about the heart, about the hands. Thinking, feeling and doing. We believe that Education should enable students to act, to make the world they want to make. But how do you stimulate such an attitude? To be honest, there are many roads you can take. That's why I want to focus on one of the most important principles of our education, the counterpoint. In other words, organizing your own contradiction in thinking. And why is this ability so important, the ability to organize your own counterpoints? Well, it allows cutting-edge self-development in relationship to others. It is the ultimate exercise in resilience. So that's why I want to ask you, and you can do this immediately, to think about something you are absolutely certain about. And when you've done this, think about who or what can be a counterpoint to that. Do you have to buy the biography of Donald Trump? Do you have a good conversation with your neighbor about climate change? Or do you need your lover to not forget your emotional life? I wish you all constructive confusion and good luck. <laughs>